All right, everyone, welcome to the podcast today. We have a very special guest, honored and humbled to be joined by Carl King Albertson. Carl, how are you? I'm good, sir. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Uh, how's everything on your end? You're out in Los Angeles, correct? Yes, uh, so I'm uh, staying at Josh Place, and where I've been here training for two weeks before I go back to Sweden next week. Is this your first time training with Josh? No, my first tra training with Josh was in uh, 2015. Oh, wow. my first visit to Los Angeles. Wow, wow! And and do you get? Uh, I mean, you like it out there, I assume. Yeah, I like it. It's uh, different from home, you know. But uh, I like it. it. Takes some time to getting used to the vibe over here, but it's nice. Speaking of home, uh, how did you get into MMA? I mean, were you a wrestler in high school or? No, I used to play a lot of ice hockey as a kid. Okay. So I had some trouble in school when I was around 14. Story, hang out with a bad crowd. So I tried boxing and just got hooked on that and trained for a year. And then my little brother started with, with uh, mixed martial arts. And I thought to myself, if you're going to learn like chokes on the ground and stuff like that, I'm going to get beaten by my little brother. So <laughs> I had to learn it too. <laughs> How old is your brother? He's two years younger than me. So he turns 24 this year in October. Okay. And so did you ever consider being uh, trying to professionally box? No. Uh, I watched you. Boxing was a good start. All right, all right. And uh, well, so, what's the MMA uh, landscape like in Sweden? That's where you started professionally, correct? Did you have any amateur bouts? Oh, can you take that again? When I had some uh, interference. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, did you have any amateur bouts in Sweden when you started? Yeah, the amateur scene in Sweden wasn't as big as it was or is now when I started. Fighting fights. It's basically you can kick, punch, knee to the body, but no punches on the ground. So I had seven of those, and I had two amateur fights in Denmark in heavyweight and a couple of kickboxing bouts and grappling bouts. So you have fought at heavyweight before? Yes, as amateur, I fought completely as a heavyweight. Have you thought about moving up to heavyweight ever since then? I have, but I think I need to grow a bit bigger first. Well, you're still, you're still, so, you're, you're what, 25, 26? 25. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I want to talk to you about a lot of things, but uh, so how did you get from, from your amateur bout to your first professional bout? How did that come about? Well, actually, my first professional bout was after my third amateur fight. Um, I didn't know it was pro. It was uh, fights down in somewhere in Poland. And uh, I just went and did Before stay at hotel way in the day before, and uh, I thought it was amateur. I didn't get paid, but apparently I, we did fight pro rules, <laughs> and and the promoter was like, "No, nah, it's better you live nice and eat good instead of getting paid." And then I thought to myself, "Okay, this is kind of a hustle, right?" <laughs> and uh, like a month later, a friend sent me like, "Carl, do you have a record in Share dot now? The fight was pro, and the guy I fought had like seven pro fights." Wow. So, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say you were you were zero and zero, and he was seven or eight fights, I believe. Uh, and, and so, so then you had fought uh, what four professional bouts before being uh, your first Ryzen bout. How did you get into Ryzen? Did you hear me? Do we have a bad connection here? It was because of my connection with Josh that I got into Ryzen at the first place. So I just had to take the shot and make the most of it. And that was Ryzen 1. And uh, did you realize, did you realize the history of Pride and the, and the president and everything? Uh, 
Kétek le a gendő, bit hacking. No, it's okay. Uh, that that was Ryzen uh, number one. Did you realize uh, that the president was the president of Pride FC? Yes, yes, I had. Uh, I was aware of that, and uh, I thought eventually it will rise again, like it was in Pride. And, and did did you watch? Do you watch MMA fights currently? Yes, I do. I try to watch. Uh, well, I cannot keep uh, like the pace like every weekend, but most of the weekends I watch the fights that's happening. I assume you're watching a lot of guys in your division, even in Bellator, because with the cross promotion. Yeah, of course. I keep an always uh, lookout for light heavyweights. Yeah, yeah. I always keep a lookout for light heavyweights. Because you be you did beat uh, Nemkov, who is in Bellator right now. That was your sixth professional fight. Um, yeah, a hell of a fight. Um, and a then, fight. And then you lost to Moldovsky, who's another great fighter. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the Yuri Prohaska fight. Uh, that was a ten-minute round. Do you prefer ten-minute rounds? Yeah. Well, I prefer 10 minute rounds because you always get a finish. At some point after seven, eight minutes, it tends to come to like a breaking point. But, uh, well, it's nice with fives also because you feel a bit of pressure too. But, uh, well, it depends on your fight style, really. But you like muscular and explosive, five minute rounds are better. You, but you would prefer a 10 minute if you had your choice? Yes. All right. All right, and then so so then you uh, you've continued to fight in Ryzen, but you also fight in the Superior Challenge. Is that in your hometown? Yes, Superior is a Swedish promotion that does fight uh, fights regularly in Stockholm and other cities in uh, Sweden. What is the rule set like there, Carl? They fight uh, like uh, basic MMA rules: three rounds, five minutes, elbows allowed. So it's uh, it's like the unified rules. Normal rules there. Uh, do do you is it in a cage? Yeah, exactly. Is it in a cage or a ring? Cage. Uh, and do you have a preference? Cage, because I can uh, grind on them a little bit better. It's a bit harder in a ring. Ring is more suitable for strikers, and uh, well. They both had their pros and cons. Well, and what was the first uh, first time at Saitama Super Arena? I mean, thirty thousand people. Had you ever fought in front of anything close to like that? No, no, I hadn't come close to that. That's also why it was a good experience. I didn't do my best in the Valentin fight, but I've learned and grown since that fight. So. What was that you cut out? I'm sorry. Well, the first time in Saitama, I didn't perform to, up to my ability. And uh, I lost that fight to Valentini. It was a better fighter that, li that night. But I've learned and grown since that fight. And hopefully I can fight Valentin someday again. That's what I was going to ask you. I assume that you'd like a rematch with him and with Yuri. I mean, <laughs> I, I, as a Ryzen fan, I'd have to assume that you're number one contender or number two contender for Yuri's belt, correct? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And that, that fight, for, for all the fans that don't know, that fight was super, super close. Maybe I had to beat one more, but that's fine by me. I know. Uh, hey, for, for the super close doesn't cut it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I understand that, but you were uh, you were getting the best of him for a long time. You know, I mean, it's not like it was a one-sided fight. I think all the fans would love to see that bout run back again. Um, what did you think about him and King Mo? Um, I saw the fight live in the locker room, and uh, both respect to both fighters, but. Uh, Giri has grown a lot since the last time they fought, and he proved that he's the, the man right now. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I much think respect. King Mo is getting older, too, so it was... Just a matter of time. 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, you wouldn't like to see them do a trilogy? You think Mo's just on his way out? Yeah, I feel um, GD is too good for Mo right now. Um. And as far as uh, as far as Bellator cross promotion, are you are you looking at any of those fighters as well to fight, or do you have any clue of your next opponent? I can't fight anyone anywhere. Depends on the depends on the circumstances. No, I have no clue right now about my next opponent. But I'm open for suggestions. <laughs> so you'd be open to going to Bellator and fighting fighting in their cage? Yes, of course. That would be awesome. As, lo- as, as long as Ryzen agrees with that. Right, right. Which they're, they're pretty lenient with their contracts. Um, what, is, what is it like for the Superior Challenge? Do you have a contract with them as well? No, the Superior fight has been uh, like a one-fight contract at the time. But Superior is a small promotion compared to Ryzen. So it's, I think they're, they're just good. it's just good for me to get fights and then get more experience to bring back to the rising ring. When would be your uh, ideal time to return? Would you like to come back here on the July or the August card? Did you catch that? July or, yeah, I got it. Okay, July sorry. or August would be good, but October would be good too. I just started getting back in shape right now. It took some, like, two weeks after fight just eating, so now I feel pretty lean and uh, starting to get back to fight shape again. So I'll be ready in maybe a month. Do you cut a lot of weight, Carl? No, not not a lot. Maybe 10 kilos. What is that in pounds? Maybe 25 pounds? 25 20? pounds, yeah, yeah. Um, what about boxing? Do you, do you watch boxing currently? Are you a fan of boxing? I'm a fan of boxing, but uh, I don't watch it as much as I watch MMA, but I usually tune in to the big fights, like when Canelo is fighting or... So, yeah, it depends on the fight. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Um, I also wanted to ask you about your intro music. What, what is that intro music, Carl? Yeah, one, one, what do you say? Your, your introduction music when you come out, your, your music? Yeah. What, what is yeah. that? What is that? Where is that from? It's really interesting. Well, actually, a friend of mine played it uh, a long time ago, and it's just kind of stuck. And I read a lot about uh, psychology. An anchor, it puts you in a certain fight stage. That it's like, well, you're going to fight or you're going to die. That's it. Wow, wow, that's interesting. It's it's one of my favorite personal introduction music. Uh, oh, really, 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 really interesting. Uh, is that something that you plan on? Do you, do you use that for Superior Challenge as well? Yeah, I use it as my intro songs. I thought about changing it a couple of times, but uh, I haven't got the courage to do that. Right, so right now I'm sticking with it. Well, what would you change it to? If you were to change it, what would you um, I don't know. I thought about changing it to techno, maybe, or, or just a little more like drums or a little more Viking style, but I haven't thought or I haven't found anything that I think suitable yet. So. Uh, how, uh, how long do you plan on fighting for? I mean, if you could... If you could see into the future, would you fight for another 10 years, 15 years? Well, I'm young right now, and I got no serious injuries and no headaches. So right now I can feel like I can fight at least 10 more years. But it all depends on the, how the career goes. You never know. Yeah, you never know. I, I just spoke to A.J. Bryant and uh, Victor Henry, of course, who I'm sure you see at the gym. And they're both really high on your yeah. skills. Um, what, yeah. What would you say, and the fans have asked me this question, what would you say you've learned the most from training with Josh? Well, as now I'm living with him, so I get a broad perspective, not only in fighting, but in uh, life. And we have good conversations where I can 
well, pick his brain. But uh, I have my book here, so I write up everything we do on the training sessions. But mostly I pick uh, up from the wrestling and ground departments. How to To get the finish better. How how did you meet Josh, Carl? Well, two thousand fifteen, I traveled to CSW. Uh, my coach's coach, or was back in the day. So I thought um, I was going to go in his uh, legacy, so, to deepen my skills in the. Shukto and the cat wrestling yeah, system. And uh, there I came across Josh, and he told me to come come and train with him at his class, roll a bit, and uh, from there it started. Wow. Is, is, do you have uh, heavier guys to spar with there at Josh's, or do you not spar there? One hundred eighty-five pounders, but uh, mostly this trip for me is more learning experience and just try to develop technical skills. I can always do like the fight, fight, fighting part at home. And now I just had a fight, had a tough fight. I got some punches into the head, so it's good. So also to like like step down the intensity of training and try to do more technical work. Um, if you could, I mean, say that the UFC or somebody came and offered you a contract, would you, uh, would you look at that or are you happy fighting in Ryzen? Well, I'm happy fighting in Ryzen, but uh, of course our goal in the careers to get into UFC and get a UFC belt. But right now I want to fight you and get the Ryzen belt. That's my number one priority. Uh, yeah, I, I sure hope that match happens. Um, so how many times have you said that you've been out there to train with Josh? Since 2015? Uh, I think this, this is my third or fourth trip to Los Angeles. Oh, wow, wow. And had, had you been to America before training here? Uh, no, the 2015 was the first time training. Otherwise, I was here. I was in Florida with my family. When My dad or my grandfather is uh, I don't know, he's like a space scientist, so he does a lot of work with rockets and satellites. Wow! So you've gotten to watch some rockets shoot off there in Cape Canaveral, Florida, up to the air and stuff like that. So it was pretty cool, anyway. You, you, yeah, you, that that's cool. That's cool. I, I I'm totally into that stuff myself, <laughs> so I uh, I love yeah. it. Um, <laughs> I wanted to ask you a couple things that the fans had for me. Uh, places that you've lived in your life. Have you lived multiple places? I, well, I traveled a bit. In my in Sweden, in my life, but I lived in different parts of the back home. Yes, my, my parents got divorced when I was younger, so I had to move around a bit. And, and how long have you speak, spoke English? Oh, sorry, I missed that. How long have you spoken English? I spoke in English, uh, I think, that, like, You know, it takes some time getting used to it back uh, at home. You mostly speak Swedish. So. Well, your English. But the more you speak it, this. Your English is very, very good, sir. I got to tell you, you know, for. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's very good. I talked to uh, Manel Cape, and he was real nervous about his English. And it, you know, <laughs> I, do you think that English is an easy language to learn compared to Swedish? Well, I think uh, English is easier. But I've been speaking English for so long, so I don't, I don't know anymore. I think Swedish will probably probably 
Korean people speaking Swedish. So. Uh, and what about Japanese? Do you speak any Japanese? I speak very little Japanese. I, I can say thank you, ask for the bill, good morning. Only a few phrases. <laughs> yes, I can say. Um, but so when you see the Swedish, what is saying? So I tried to listen to that too. Is there Swedish uh, media that goes to Ryzen events? Are you interviewed in in Swedish at Ryzen? One more time. Uh, are you interviewed in Swedish at Ryzen events for like the weigh-ins and the and the media day? Is there Swedish media there? I've been uh, interviewed about uh, Ryzen at some Swedish media channels. Okay, okay. I wondered about that because I know there's not a lot of English as well over there, you know. Um, no. And so what, what's that like? How, how do you get around? Do you have someone with you that speaks Japanese? Sorry, one more time. No, you're good. You're good. Do you have someone with you that speaks Japanese or is it pretty easy to get around there? No, it's pretty easy to get around. They're very friendly. So they help you if in the, in the way, any way they can, if they have. So, a uh, Japanese lady in Stockholm who translates emails and stuff for me if I need to. Okay, all right. And so, if you could choose your next opponent, who would it be? I mean, surely Yuri, but uh, who else is on your radar? Yeah, sure. I just, you know, you know, you're a long more experienced than I. on my radar? Yes. Uh, I haven't forgot about uh, Vadim and Valentin too, so, so those are the main three key opponents I look for or that I compare myself to or follow them as like a positive rivalry that makes me want to improve my game because we have a history fighting together. Well, both can happen because Moldovsky is in Bellator, I believe, correct? Yeah, that's, that's correct. Now, what do you what do you think about the cross promotion thing? Do you think all organizations should do this? UFC. Well, I think UFC probably not do it, but, but I think it's good that Rice and Bellator are cooperating, and uh, hopefully we can see more organizations join and build uh, build a bigger organization than the UFC. It will help the fighters a lot, I think. Yeah, because Ryzen works with a whole hell of a lot of uh, organizations, which is a beautiful thing as a fan. You know, I want to yeah. see the best against the best, you know. Yeah. I think a, I think a reason the UFC won't do it is because of uh, the Chuck yeah. Bell thing, you know. Were you, uh, were you a fan of Pride? Have you went back and watched the Pride event? Yeah. Ooh, would you say that yeah, you... Yeah, I watched a lot of Pride. Did you have a, a favorite fighter? I think we had a bad connection here, Carl. Can't see you or hear you. <laughs> 